Cholidocolithiasis and cholangitis are the topics. Cholidocolithiasis is referring to a stone in the common bile duct, and cholangitis is referring to inflammation of the biliary tree. And I'll draw a diagram to explain all of this. So let's draw all the components. Here, of course, we have the liver. Right underneath it, you have a gallbladder. And then coming out through both of these are some ducts. The one that comes out through the liver is known as the hepatic duct. And the one that comes out of the gallbladder is known as the cystic duct. And those two join to form the common bile duct. Now the common bile duct joins with one final duct here known as the pancreatic duct. And together they form this duct known as the ampulla of Vader. And that opens up into the intestine, but in particular the part of the intestine known as the duodenum. Now what's important that I really wanted to mention, and I'll draw it in in uh, brown, is right here at the opening there's a very special part of the anatomy known as the sphincter of Odi. And the reason that's important is because the sphincter of Odi is a valve and it controls the flow of things that go from this ampulla vader into the duodenum such as bile and enzymes. And that is actually part of the treatment um, of um, this biliary obstruction and I'll explain that later on. So what's exactly happening here is you have a stone in that common bile duct. So I'll draw it once more. So remember this was the cystic duct, this was the hepatic duct, and then you have the common bile duct. And inside you have the stone. And it's sitting here, let's say. Now normally that stone would just pass into the duodenum. It would just eventually go into the duodenum and not cause any problems. But sometimes it stays there. Now there's two types of stones. There's ones that form in the actual ducts themselves and then there's others that form up in the gallbladder and then they migrate down. Now the ones that form in the gallbladder and migrate to the bile ducts, those are the most common but 85% of all of these stones are those types. Now, like I said, they usually pass into the duodenum and go into you know, the intestine and don't cause any problems, but sometimes they can get stuck there. And if that happens, that leads to cholangitis. So what's cholangitis? Well, by definition, it's the inflammation of the biliary tree. Now, what's a biliary tree? The biliary tree is just the name given to this whole um, area here of these ducts. It kind of looks like the tree, branches of a tree. That's why it's called that. Now, what's important with uh, cholangitis is that when you have cholangitis, you basically have a bile duct that's been obstructed by the stone. And as a result, the bacteria that normally are in the duodenum can actually get trapped into the bile ducts and ascend from the duodenum where they originated from um, to the biliary tree. And this, of course, causes infection. And the infection is usually caused by organisms like E. coli or Klebsiella. And then eventually, later, you'll get inflammation of that biliary tree as well. So very important to remember those events. So what are the symptoms of cholangitis? 
Well, the symptoms of cholangitis, interestingly, have been given a special name, actually. They're called Charcot's triad. So what are those three things that make up the triad? Well, the first thing is fever. The next thing is right upper quadrant abdominal pain. And the third one is jaundice, which, of course, is yellowing of the skin and they can also be de detected by doing liver enzymes such as ALT and AST. There's other nonspecific symptoms of cholangitis such as nausea and vomiting that will commonly be present on licensing exams. So how do you diagnose this? Well, the first thing is doing some blood tests such as a CBC that will tell you the white blood cell count which will be elevated because this is of course a infection. Liver function tests like the ones I just men mentioned, AST, ALT. Bilirubin levels. Anytime you're trying to do a workup of a situation of jaundice, that will be helpful. But the one that will help you visualize the stone is a right upper quadrant abdominal ultrasound. This is the test that will allow you to detect that stone. And finally, treatment. Treatment, of course, you start the patient on antibiotics to treat the infection, but you have to get rid of that stone. So how do you do that? Remember, the stone is sitting there. So a stone is sitting in the common bile duct, and you want to actually get it to pass down into. So what do you do? Well, you have to do a procedure known as an ERCP, and then you have to do a sphincter otomy. So what does all this mean? ERCP is a endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Big long name. But what it does is it allows you to actually visualize the bile ducts with a camera. The sphincter otomy, what it does in this case in particular, is allows you to take that sphincter of Odi, remember I mentioned the sphincter of Odi is a valve that controls the flow of uh, bile and enzymes and anything rather uh, from the common bile duct into the duodenum here. So what you have to do is actually cut that sphincter so that allows the passage of the stone into the duodenum and then they can just go into the intestine. So let's take a look at a few vignettes and see what this looks like. 64-year-old woman presents to the emergency department with abdominal pain and fever. She has had a long history of mild intermittent dyspepsia that frequently has followed meals. She has diabetes and her response to oral hypoglycemic agents has been poor. She has refused to use insulin. At the time of presentation, she has been ill for 36 hours with vomiting, fever, and abdominal pain. On exam, she is febrile with a temperature of 38.9 and tachycardia. She is mildly jaundiced, bowel sounds are diminished, tenderness and guarding are most marked in the right upper quadrant. Toward the end of the exam, rigor is evident and she has broken into a sweat, which of the following is most likely to be her problem. Well, she's got fever, she's got right upper quadrant pain, and the question also tells you that she has jaundice. So this is Charcot's triad. And if it is Charcot's triad, that's a very strong indication that she has cholangitis. Choice B. Next question. 36-year-old woman comes to the office because of three-day history of yellow skin fever and abdominal pain. Pain is most present in the right upper quadrant. However, she sometimes feels it in the right shoulder. She has had several similar episodes in the past, but they were not accompanied by fever and skin discoloration. She is married and has three kids, none of which are sick. Temperature is 39.3 Celsius, blood pressure is 110, pulse is 70, respirations are 20. Physical exam shows right upper quadrant tenderness. She has the chills. She continues to breathe normally during right upper quadrant palpation. Lab studies show ALT is high, AST is high and so are the bilirubin values, most likely diagnosis is. Well again, she's got fever, 
Um, she's got right upper quadrant uh, pain, and she definitely has all the lab values consistent with jaundice. So that's right. Uh, Charcoal's triad, that points to cholangitis. But I just wanted to mention one quick thing here. Right here, she continues to breathe normally during right upper quadrant palpation. That's very important to distinguish from cholecystitis because in cholecystitis you have something known as Murphy's sign. And what that is is that when you palpate her right upper quadrant, she would have inspiratory arrest. When you palpate her right upper quadrant, she continues to breathe normally, so she does not have Murphy's sign. So that's a strong clue to point you away from cholecystitis and toward cholangitis. Cholecystitis, of course, just being inflammation of the gallbladder rather than the biliary tree, which is what cholangitis is. And finally, 38-year-old woman comes to the emergency room with severe right-sided abdominal pain, fever, chills. She has a history of gallstones, and her family doctor recommended a cholecystectomy after a similar episode several months ago. Upon exam, she has temperature of 102 Fahrenheit and is tender in the right upper quadrant and visibly jaundiced. White cell count is 18,000. In which of the following locations is a gallstone most likely lodged? Well, I won't draw the diagram again, but if you remember, the common bile duct is where the stone is in a case of cholelithiasis that later progresses to cause cholangitis, which is what she has. So the answer for this is choice A.